Are you a gamer? Do you like to do what is often known as a pro gamer move? Do you like to use gamer branded headphones for gaming? Well, uh, sit down, son, because your mother and I are very disappointed with you. Gamer headphones. Every time I walk into an audio discord or some audio forum, there's always going to be some random newbie who's going to come up and is going to ask the same damn question. What are the best gaming headphones? I'm going to give you a brief summary of this video right now. There is no such thing as a gaming headphone. You'd be thinking to yourself, oh, there's such a, there's such a controversial take, Critical. Why? There's, there's clearly gaming headphones out there in the market right now. Shh, shh, shh. No, no, you don't understand me. There is no such thing as a gaming headphone. I'm going to blow all your minds right now. You could, you could use any headphone for gaming. I know. How? How? Whenever you game, you need a gaming headphone, right? You can't just take something off the shelf and just put it on your head and start gaming. That's not right. That goes against the law of nature. What's going on? I'm getting extremely emotional over this. Emotional is what you guys need. You, you motherfuckers need some tough love. You know, maybe you don't listen to me because I'm just some random jag off talking to a camera, right? I understand. I understand. Let's look at it on a much more serious, in-depth analysis on what makes a gaming headphone a gaming headphone and why gaming headphones actually suck. Timmy, put it up for me right now. Three bullet points. You have competitive advantage. Then you have immersiveness. And then you just want something with a microphone, all of which are valid concerns to certain degrees. Let's take a look at competitive advantage because a lot of people apparently really, really, really want to do much better with spatial localization every time they play a game. I'm here to drop a truth bomb. I'm here to drop the biggest truth bomb, some tough love. Let Uncle Critical tell you the truth, okay? Very easy one, very easy one. 90% of you are yeah, my one. I know, I know. It's very hard to take in. I know. Uncle Kriniko tell you a very easy one, okay? Just buy a headphone to enjoy. No need to worry about competitive advantage. There's no need. You're not good enough to have the competitive advantage. I tell you first, all of you with your QDEF ratio under one, uh, already CMI already. <laughs> <laughs> there you guys, there you guys first. Huh? You go down to the LAN tournament, you see all your favorite pro gamer out there uh, using all... What are they using? What are they using? You think they're using HD 100s as far out there, huh? huh? Where God? You go down all the pro gamer, right? They're all using either sponsored headphone or some random earbud and then they put on top the 3M uh, noise isolator one. I tell you, I tell you. They're gonna give a fuck. You shouldn't give a fuck also. Essentially, it all boils down to this. If you really, really, really want a competitive advantage, there is certain characteristics that you need to look out for. I don't want to really go into the weeds of the details in there on this video. So really, if you're interested, just, you know, fuck off. Click the link down below. I've written all of the, the in-depth stuff that I honestly won't cover in this video. But in general, for a competitively advantageous headphone, you want a headphone that is neutral to bright sounding, as well as having wide soundstage, pinpoint precise imaging, most all of which would probably land you with an open back headphone. And if you're talking about immersiveness, anything works. It's not like you need some special headphone just to enjoy your movie or your video game or whatever right? Some of you may feel like you want to be in a movie, like you want to be in a Michael Bay film, hearing all the explosions and feeling like you're on the run from something, I guess. Then you want a bass boosted headphone. But here's the weird catch 22. If you get a bass boosted headphone, it's not necessarily competitively advantageous because for a headphone to be competitively advantageous, you want it to display gunshots and footsteps much more clearly, which is directly contrasting an immersively engaging headphone. So really between the two, you really have to pick and choose. Do you want it to be immersive or do you want it to be advantageous? Honestly, pick immersive because as I mentioned again, 
you all see at my one. So the third point is a microphone. You just want something with a microphone so that you can talk with your friends. Understandable. I have no friends. I wouldn't understand. So here's the question that I ask. Why can't you just buy them separately? I know. I'm, I'm blowing people's minds right now. Why buy an all-in-one solution when you can pick and choose the best of each world? Don't just half as two things, whole as one thing, or even better, whole as two things. Again, you can buy the best microphone and you can buy the best headphone. With a gaming headphone, you get shitty versions of both. The mainstay recommendation for a microphone is usually a cheap lapel slash lavalier microphone, which you can get for about $10, $20. I actually use a, a weird cheap lavalier microphone as well for my previous videos. And as you can tell, it doesn't sound totally shit. It's not bad, isn't it? For the amount that you paid, it sounds all right. And this is honestly one of the things that you should get. I don't need this anymore because I got this thing now. Goodbye. If you go a bit higher, most people would recommend the Samson Go microphone or the Vmoda Boom Pro microphone. The Boom Pro is limited in compatibility, so not all headphones can use it. If you want a, a boom microphone that all headphones can use, you can go look at the Antlion Mod Mic. Sponsor me. The mod mic ranges, I think, between $50 to $150. After that point, you probably want to get like a USB microphone or even an XLR microphone. But at that point, you need to buy an interface again and yada, yada, yada. This is in my ballpark. Honestly, if you want to know more about microphones, you could go down to like podcast stage, Julian Krauss for like interface advice. I listen to them. I bought the Neumann TLM 102 based off of podcast stages. New numerous very in-depth videos and I'm very thankful for him. But you're not here for microphones. You're here for headphones. So I get it, you know? I told all of you that, you know, you could just use any headphone for gaming. So just, just click off, buy whatever you want. But maybe you tell me, Krin, but what if I really, really, really want some recommendation? Please make me spend money. All right, fine. I got you. May I present to you the king of the $50 range? The KSC-75s. These clip-on not headphones are actually one of the best gaming headphones that you can buy all the way up to like $150. I'm not exaggerating. I scoured for all of the open back headphones under $100 and I will pick the KSC-75s every single time. They look ridiculous, but you're not gaming in front of a crowd. Let's face it. All of you are gaming at home with no one to look at you. So it can look like a big goofball all you want. You get the staging, you get the imaging, you get the clarity because this thing doesn't have any bass extension. It's the perfect gaming headphone. It's a great, like, not headphone headphone, but it feels like it's specifically tailored for gaming because of all of these traits all bundled together and even up to like a $30 budget honestly honestly you could just buy again the cheap lavalier microphone for 10 bucks this thing for 20 bucks or even lower on sale sometimes and you haven't even broken the budget yet and i guarantee you i guarantee you that this KSC 75 and some cheap Lavalier mic is going to be way better than any cheap Chinese bullshit that you can find at under $30. I would know because there was a brand called EXA that sent me their E900 headphone. And let me tell you, that was just, uh, just, uh, not great. Not great. But let's say you have a hundred dollars to spend. Let's say you really, really want to maximize your budget. I would still say to get a KSC 75, but I, I feel obligated to mention this headphone as well. The Philips SHP 95. The Philips SHP. Oh, I can't finish it. The Philips SHP 95. <laughs> yes, the ship as they call it, is also a pretty decent gaming headphone and only a gaming headphone. I would never ever use it for music listening. Oh dear God, it's, I mean, it's not bad. I'm, I'm just exaggerating the, the whole, but you know, it's been overhyped to hell. And honestly, every time I hear the SHP 95, just makes me want to 
dry heave. So if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, just going up the price bracket a little bit more, you get the AKG K612. It is what I'll consider a clinical execution of a gaming headphone. It is dead flat with a slight treble boost. It has all the hallmarks of the AKG staging and imaging. It's one of the best gaming headphones that you can get at any price point, which is surprising because you can get this at $150. I say some of because there are some better ones, but you know, more on that later. But the big problem is it's not really immersive. It's competitively advantageous, sure, but you know, it just makes everything sound dead. It's boring. It's like a studio environment. It's everything is shown to you like a blank canvas, but sometimes you want a little bit more energy. You want a bit more saturation, right? If you just want a little bit more, what do you get? You get the Hi-Fi Man HE400 SE. It is an improvement over the HE400i, which I also thought was quite a decent headphone, but the 400 SE is quite a large improvement overall. As a gaming headphone, it's all right. I don't think it's the best. It's the staging and imaging leaves some to be desired, but it's not completely bad. It sounds like an open bag, but it doesn't sound like an amazing open back. But you know, in most cases, I would listen to the 400 SC over the 612 Pro because it, it just sounds a lot more engaging, dynamic, and fun, and not dead. So if you go up into the under $300 bracket, that's where you get the Bayer Dynamic DT880. That one is a neutral bright-ish signature. It has the signature Bayer Dynamic treble, but where it is a bit unpalatable in music listening actually makes it very very appropriate for gaming it's very it's, it's poetic <laughs> go a little further up into the sub 500 bracket or in this case more like the sub 400 bracket you get the audio technica r70x it is honestly one of the best gaming headphones that i would personally use if i didn't already have another end game again more on that later it has the best balance of staging and imaging precision and while the signature is not bright tilted it honestly doesn't need that because the staging and imaging is just that good honestly that would be what would be most people's end game for a gaming headphone there is also the hi-fi man sandara which i feel like it's not as appropriate for gaming but it's such a good all-rounder headphone that i feel like it at least deserves a mention on this list. Speaking of mentions, let's go on honorable mentions, which are mostly populated by Sennheiser. There is the Sennheiser 560S, which costs about $200. Slightly weird imaging. You could buy it. Again, it doesn't matter. There is also the mass drop Sennheiser HD6XX. Amazing value. Great headphone. Just not the best for gaming. But again, who cares? Just. <laughs> It doesn't matter. There's also the HD 600, which I prefer over the 650 and the 6XX. And I feel like it has slightly better staging, but still has the imaging problems. So I don't, again, not the most appropriate for gaming, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> and now we head into the end game. Probably the best headphone that you can possibly get for gaming. And drum roll. HD 800. Most people who already know of the HD 800's existence would know that this would be an obvious mention. It is the headphone with the widest soundstage, the best imaging, that's kind of, it depends on who you ask, and it has that bright neutral signature that is almost perfect for gaming. It's, if you want to sound whore, this is the best headphone, bar none. But let's not kid ourselves. This is a... Uh, extremely expensive. <laughs> uh, sometimes I need to remind myself that most gamers are only willing to spend like what? $200 on a gaming headphone? Peasants. Now I hear you typing behind the screen. I hear you. Krin, what if I just want to buy an all-in-one? What if I just want to be a lazy boy and just buy everything and not worry about selecting the microphone and the headphone. As, as much of a shit post as this video is, I understand that there is a use case for the all-in-one gaming headset. You know, it's easy. It's an easy purchase and sometimes you just want an antenna sticking on the side of your head. I don't know, but you know, some, some people have weird fetishes. And you're right. There are some not terrible gaming headsets and I shall list them off now. The Astro A40. 
and maybe the Astro A50, but I haven't tested it yet. I don't want to talk too much about things that I have not tested. There is also the Sennheiser PC38X. I've written a review on it. I think it's a great headphone, but ironically, not a great headphone for gaming. But it has a microphone, so I guess that fulfills the headset criteria. There's also the PC37X, but I have not heard that. But people say it's all right, so take that how you will. And then there is also the Bayer Dynamic Tiger. Is it called Tiger? Is it pronounced Tiger? The Tiger. The Bayer Dynamic Tiger 300R. Uh, it doesn't have a microphone, but it does come with a streamer bundle. So uh yeah that that might work but honestly at that point when you're buying a usb microphone and a headphones in two separate packages you might as well just buy them just normally right just select your headphone select the best microphone you don't have to buy both if by the same brand right and then if you want the creme de la creme of the gamer branded headphones i guess there is always the odyssey lcd g X. Now, the problem is it weighs half a kilo. Look, you're selling it to gamers. They sit on your asses for like 6 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours straight. Why would you subject them to half a kilo on your heads? I don't get it. And I haven't even touched on the sound. Honestly, the LCD GX is not the most appropriate for gaming just because it has a boom mic doesn't automatically mean that it's a gamer headphone. My experience with gaming headsets is limited, but I've heard a lot. I've heard stuff from Corsair. I've heard a lot of stuff from Logitech. I've heard some stuff from Razer. All of them terrible. But in general, uh, I think there are still a few others that seem to be decent, like the HyperX Cloud 2, as well as the Cooler Master MH751. I'm just listing things off of my head. Oh, people also say that the Odyssey Penrose is fine as well, but uh, I haven't gotten around to trying it yet. I should. I should. So what's your key takeaway from this video? Is it what are the best headphones for gaming at different price point? No. Key takeaway here is that anything works. Use whatever the fuck you want for headphones. It really, really doesn't matter. If the pros are using shitter earbuds and random sponsored gear and still performing at the level that they are, you would not benefit from it. Honestly speaking, you are not on Kovac 24-7. You, <laughs> me, honestly, I, I, I am the representation of the average gamer. And, you know, a headphone does not improve my performance as much as, you know, actual practice. It's just playing the game and knowing its mechanics. Practice, practice above all. You cannot pay to win skill. You cannot pay to win sound whoring because the game already gives it to you. Yes, you would have an advantage if you play with sound versus someone who is not playing with sound. But that's where the biggest advantage starts and ends. Really, use what you want. There's no such thing as a gaming headphone. Please don't lynch me. And you know now it's the time where I thank my big muddy boys. McMadface, Dennis, Iamon, Jerry Liu, Alexander, Jonathan, GY Audio, and Timmy. I think that's all. Ha, huh, hey, a real first take. Timmy will attest. Yeah, that really is all. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what to do if you like this video. Like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, etc, etc. See you next week. Uh, don't die. And fuck off. My internet actually just got shut off. I'm using 4G right now. <sighs>